Well, let's talk about some stuff that could happen, stuff that's been rumored so far, all that stuff. This is kind of more on the the flyer side of things. There've been some guys that could be rumored to come to Philly, uh, and then you also have you know all the some guys are UFA, some guys have some term. Let's kind of break them down. So uh, we got Nick Sealer, Rasmus Ristolainen, Scott Lawton, and Sean Walker. Uh, those are the guys that seem like they're the most rumored right now for the Flyers. Uh, let me just ask a kind of general question, then we'll kind of get into the uh, little you know inside stuff on on each each four of these guys. Uh, if you were to kind of, I'll just put that out there, put this out there for for anyone. When you're kind of looking at this and you look at the guys that could be traded again, it's Sealer, Risto, Lawton, and Walker. Who gets dealt first? I think probably Walker, just because he's he's kind of the, uh, you know, he's he's the guy right now who I, I think pretty clearly has the most value out of the guys you mentioned. Maybe well, other than Lawton. But in terms of the defenseman, you know, obviously Lawton's going to fetch more because he's a center and he has yeah. term. But of the guys that are on expiring deals, he's probably going to get you the most back. Um, I think uh, – I don't know. I mean, there's there's a few teams, obviously, that are it, – it's kind of, you know, rumors going around that he might be uh, linked to some teams, specifically in the West. Edmonton could be a team. Toronto could be a team if they, you know, need some help on the blue line. I feel like Toronto and Edmonton are linked to – fucking everybody i mean you know so it feels like that way it's, well, i uh, mean how strong do you think that that those rumors are because i mean like obviously teams like in their position are going to be or they have to be in on every depth piece right. going into the playoffs they have to get yeah, right. everybody right yeah no i mean no. you know I, you never really know until i feel like the last kind of teams often you know they'll try to put out smoke screens too obviously to kind of boost their their guys value so you never really know until usually around the last few days and obviously on the day of. But uh, I would say, you know, probably Walker has the most value. The guys on expiring deals. I think Risto could maybe get you something if you retain. You might have to eat, you know, 25, 30%, but you could definitely get you something. And then, uh, you know, obviously Lawton, I feel like of those four, is probably the, the top guy that teams are going to be looking at. Yeah. Yeah. No, go ahead, Will. I mean, I, I'd probably agree. I, th- I think it would be – I mean, I, maybe my answer would be Lawton would be the first I'd expect to be dealt only because we've seen the centers going early. Um, granted, I think it's more likely that Walker and Sealer go than Lawton, but if I had to guess on who would go first, I would imagine Lawton just because we've seen Monaghan and um, Lindholm go so early. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but like Lawton, they could wait. He still has two years after this one. They could do it in the off season. They could do a next trade deadline. Yeah. Um, so I think there's only they don't at all. Like if they don't like what the deal they're being offered, I wouldn't be surprised if they just keep them around. Mm-hmm. Well, I think yeah, the they, have, they have leverage. They have some leverage with him. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Like how much of a compliment every he is. Right. You know. Yeah. And, and the one thing with Lawton that I think a lot of people kind of forget sometimes is he can play anywhere in your lineup. Right. He can That's play what I mean. first he's line. A he can play second line. Player. I mean he's not he's not a guy that you know you'd want to do that, but in a pinch he could do it. Um and he has no problem doing it. That's the one yeah. thing that I've I've constantly heard about Lawton year after year is that he has no problem playing anywhere. He can play center, can play wing. He's good defensively. He can do PK. He can Christ he's gonna put power play the the goal in Seattle the other night. Um yeah. Yeah, you know he's got two goals in two games. Recently, obviously, the the goal against the Kraken and then scored uh, the eventual game winner against Coyotes. For me, I think they make three trades. I think Slaw goes for like maybe a, a seventh or sixth if you could even squeeze that out of somebody. Uh, I think Walker goes, and I think Lawton and Sealer are packaged in a deal. And I could see Walker going. I think the first, I th- they at least get a first round pick. Uh, at least one. I don't think they'll get two. They'll probably only get one. If they did get two, that would be sweet. But I think in an ideal situation, I feel like it's probably going to be Lawton uh, and Sealer going to be getting you the, the first in, in a package. And, uh, you know, I, I could see – because I, I feel like with Lawton, like he's got the term. He's the guy that, you know, has the most term out of anyone that we're trading. 
and he doesn't make a ton of money. He only makes three million. Sealer doesn't make a ton either. I feel like you kind of you know move the the guy with the term with the, the you know sixth seventh defenseman blocks a shit ton of shots. You kind of move that in in the same deal at a time, and you might be able to get not just a first, but maybe a first and a prospect or something like that. Because because there's more there. I mean, there's there's a ton to a team like say Dallas or, or Edmonton or whoever that's trying to win a cup. Um, I mean, I you know you could say any team you want, Toronto, Boston, you know the Jets, um, Vegas, whoever, right? So I, I I think that's how I kind of see it. I think Walker they could get could probably fetch them a second. I mean, a first would be great, but I I think a second is probably ideal. I, I it's it's really hard for me to tell because I think it's too far out from where obviously where we're talking now, and obviously it's all rumors, right? But at the same time, for me it's harder because it's like. I've kind of changed my opinion on this like every couple of days where I'm like some days I feel like it could be Walker getting the first. I don't know. I mean, I think it all depends on play at the time. And I think talks, obviously, they take time too. Like I don't think this is anything that's going to be like the day of, hey, you know, we're we're going to be looking at this guy. Like I think this stuff could be kind of played out a little bit. There's been a ton of scouts at the Flyers games. The Flyers have been scouting some teams as well. There was, what, 13 teams at the game against Arizona on Monday? There, like that. there was a ton, Something and Vegas crazy. actually had three. Vegas had three, yeah. So, I mean, that's that, that's something to keep in mind. So, I mean, I think a lot of that – Sorry to cut you off, but I good. think the, the thing that's really interesting about Vegas having three, it's usually <laughs> kind of like, you know, you raise an eyebrow if they have two. The fact that they had three is like – you know, really says a lot. And the thing that makes me wonder is it, it's got to be Philly because if it was Arizona, they would have just scouted an Arizona game because they're the state right over. There, there's no I mean, reason right. that they would have scouted the Coyotes in Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't we have scouts the at the Vancouver-Boston game mm-hmm. in Vancouver? Yeah. yeah. I wonder I'm I wonder like, if the Flyers had anyone there for the bean pot. And maybe they just said, hey, go early. And scout that could have been. I mean, That's, that was something I thought of. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I don't know. To me, it just. Not, I don't know. That is true. You think all yeah, these I guys want to be traded? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think Lawton wants to get traded. I mean, like, you guys saw the video of him last year with the nasty knuckles. Yeah, I think if it was, yeah, yeah, I think if he it was have have long, he'd, I mean, he'd be a flyer for the rest of his career. I think. Yeah, well, people were joking. They're like, they, I don't think people were joking that he heard that. And he's like, fuck yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think anyone wants to get dealt, especially because really, I mean, it's not like it's it's you know, it's different with the Flyers this year. They're in a playoff spot. If they were you know bottom of the league, you know, maybe like where Montreal is or whatever, then yeah, if it was like twenty twenty two all over again, but it's not like they're third in the division and they have a good jump. I mean, they're eight points above on the Devils right now. Mm-hmm. So and you know and obviously we'll, we'll talk about the Stadium Series in a little bit, but you know I think. Uh, I, I think it, it I really I think if they get traded it, it it I don't think it really it definitely benefits them because they have a better chance of obviously winning a cup. But it's not like it's you know, I mean I I, I think we're a playoff team, you know, just with how they've been playing and kind of where the dates are, are falling and, and everything. And um the Flyers haven't really I don't think the Flyers have really acted like they've been afraid of really any team this year. Like they've they've been able to kind of outside of like the Bruins okay. and the Rangers, they've given pretty much every team a run for their money. So I don't know. I mean, it's interesting. I, I no, one thing I just great. thought of. Ottawa's not great, though. I know. No, not at all. That, that we lose to them. Yeah. Well, one thing I just thought of with Vegas, actually, and you know, I'm not going to pretend like I'm an insider. I know things, but if it, there is something going on with Vegas, I wonder if they're looking at Denisenko, because Denisenko is one of the guys that they were looking at in the in the Drew deal when they got Tippett. That was one of the guys that maybe could have been in play. He's he's 23, you know, they're looking for kind of reclamation projects. He's got 39 points in 44 games in the AHL this year. I mean, I don't know who you'd be trading there, but if maybe there's something going on, I wonder if, if you know, maybe Dennis Senko is one of the guys involved. Yeah. Bill Zito probably still has nightmares over that type of deal. <laughs> that was, that turned it. out to be, Chuck it, Fletcher made one, one good trade, I think, that was like mind-blowingly good throughout his time here. And it just happened to be, you it's know, the biggest one. one. And it was the one that he had to. Yeah, yeah exactly. That one. I mean, you got Tippett out of it, and Tippett alone is fantastic. But then to get Denver Barkey out of it, which is just another tip to the Flyer scouts. And um, a first round pick that hasn't even been used yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we got we got two firsts this year. We still have uh, 
what do we, we have two next year? No. Or my no, we have two seconds, right? Two seconds and maybe three yeah. if the Columbus one moves to next year. Right. No, wait. I thought we had two firsts. We have two no. firsts next year, I thought. No, two I firsts this year. From, I or, thought we I meant two... I meant that's what I meant this year. No, we have two firsts yeah. next year. We have Columbus. We no, we don't. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm second. looking at the second round. My bad. My bad. My bad. Um, yeah, I looked over to the right, like thinking that was still first round. Um, no, yeah, that's second round pick. Um, but no, two first. I mean, they 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 could definitely get another one for this year if they get another one for for next. I, I think. I mean, they have a ton of time. But I do think if they did get the first this year, it's probably a 2025. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I don't know though. I mean, th- the one thing with Danny and I, I tweeted this out earlier with Briere. Every move they've made has given me confidence, like in them. Mm-hmm. Like each one kind of increases my. I don't want to say confidence again. It's kind of a not really a belief kind of a word. Yeah, my, my belief. I guess. Yeah, it's a good way to put it. It. I, I think the one thing that I like is like, and, and and just going back to the the when these guys came in, you know, it was all the talk about the rebuild and doing it right and everything and what Danny had said. And I was like, all right, you know, this is all talk. And they've built on that. Like, and obviously this is, you know, everyone knows that, but from the Provorov deal where you ate a little bit of money with Peterson, but you got a first and it's, you know, it's been kind of working out. Um, you know, you have uh, uh, Hathaway's signing, Paling signing, an extension, Tippett's extension. You have the Drysdale trade, which came out of nowhere, but it's really benefited the Flyers. Like, they've done a lot of good moves so far. That's like, hey, like, you know, they're really, you know, building this right, I guess, is, is the, the right way to put it. It gives people a sense of security that they're kind of, like, even if something goes wrong, like with, with the Goche deal, you know, nobody knew about that and it was under wraps, but they knew about it the entire time. And instead of kind of, you know, especially it goes back to the integrity of, you know, not leaking things in the organization because that was a big problem a couple years ago. The fact that they were able to keep it quiet, the fact that they not only got something for a guy who clearly didn't want to be here and had no leverage, they kept their leverage, got Jamie Drysdale, an elite player, and a second round pick on top of that. I'm not sitting here saying that losing Cutter Goche wasn't a big blow, but I mean... Drysdale in a second could turn out to ha- be more valuable than Goche was here 